Hello and welcome back again, ladies and gentlemen. This is Elisa Ruffin with Leading Educators, and you are on the Grade 11 ELA Unit 6 Lesson Video Series. Today, we jump into Week 7, Lesson 32 with The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe. So far this week, we have been engaged in analyzing the craft and structure of the text. We started on day one with a, another skim read and a quick write. Day two, we did some additional reading and reviewing of our annotations, responded to some really good questions, and generated an alternate title for the text based on some criteria that we talked about. Today, we're gonna to continue our analysis of the craft and structure, looking at foreshadowing and pacing. And then you're gonna engage in a read aloud. So I'm excited about today. It's two different aspects of literature. Um, and craft that we haven't quite talked about yet that I think you will find interesting, especially as it relates to the idea of suspense. But before we get going, always remember that when we're done today with those lesson activities, that you should be sharing your learning with a family member, caregiver, or friend, completing the weekly fluency activity with a page from the text, and doing an additional 20 minutes of reading of a text of your choice. We also have that little business called the riddle of the day. As you know, this week we are doing word associations. So, so far you've been to, through two rounds of these. I present you with three words and you find the word that binds them all together that's missing from the list. So this is your opportunity to gather, gather, gather all those people around who are a part of the riddle of the day with you, this routine. And again, if it is you, I'm going solo. Make sure you get that mind clear and ready to go because here comes our list for today. The words are cream, cube, cap. Cream, cube, cap. Now what word can be missing that actually ties these three things together? What is the word association? Take a moment to talk think, et cetera. This is the moment where I, where I would suggest you pause the video if you need a little bit more time to think because you just don't want me to spoil the answer because I'm going to tell you what's missing. And what's missing from this list? Ice. So let's take a look. Ice cream, ice cube, ice cap. So you heard of that polar ice caps, right? So ice is what's missing here, ladies and gentlemen. So hopefully you've been on a roll this week and you were able to figure that out right away. Again, it's a good, good practice um, and warm up for making inferences, a decoding, drawing conclusions, comparing and contrasting, identifying similarities. All of those things, those parts of the brain that's doing that, that critical thinking are going to be necessary for today and for lessons in the future. Let's make sure that we have our materials as we prepare to engage in the activities. You need the Telltale Heart Text, your learning packet, week seven, lesson 32, note catcher, pen or pencil, and a mobile device is optional if you'd like to access the text digitally. You know by now that the text is written by Edgar Allan Poe. It is an example of Gothic literature and a psychological thriller that Poe was very fond of writing, and that it is connected to our essential question for the unit, what do stories reveal about the human condition, and has its own guiding question, what sinister parts of the human condition does the telltale heart reveal? Our learning target for today, I can explain how the author uses foreshadow and pacing to build the tension in the story and create suspense, okay? Let's talk a little bit about what foreshadowing is as we discuss our read, think, talk, write, and close protocol that we're doing today. So as you skim through the text, you're gonna be keeping foreshadowing and pacing in view here. Foreshadowing is the use of clues to suggest events that have not happened yet. These are hints or clues. It's an overall feeling that the author generates in the reader to let you know, mm, something's gonna happen. And I think it's gonna be this. It's what gives you that boost to be able to make a prediction. Remember you had to do that in your lessons last week. Pacing is the speed or rhythm of writing. Writers may delivery, deliberately slow down the pacing of writing or speed it up. Sometimes they do that with dialogue, right? So they can speed up the pace of a story by making that dialogue short and quick and to the point, um, almost staccato, if you will, if you're a musician. Um, or they can slow it down by adding more descriptive words and longer sentences, right? Slowing down that pace. All depends on what the author is trying to accomplish. We're going to look at both of those things. And you're going to think through how does the author use foreshadowing and pacing to build 
the tension in the story and create suspense. You're going to talk about with your family member, caregiver, or friend specific examples from the story, as well as other stories you've read or a movie that you may have seen when the audience is given a clue about what might happen later on in the story, right? And then you're going to think, why did including this clue build suspense? And then record your answer or response in the note catcher. In the right section today, you are going to complete the foreshadow and pacing chart, which is going to help you in your think section as well. Kind of like what you did yesterday. Uh, the two are companions today again. And then closing, you're identifying a passage from the story that you think creates the most suspense for the reader. What is the most nail-biting, suspense-filled passage? And then you're going to read it out loud to a family member, friend, or caregiver and see if he or she agrees with you. And at this point, you've shared a summary. So um, they should have a pretty good feel of the rhythm of the text and whether or not they feel that that actually creates some, some suspense so and some tension. So let's get into our quick models for today. So as I said before, the think and write sections are companions, just like yesterday. And so the think section asks you, how does the author use foreshadow and pacing to build tension in the story and cre create suspense? We've already talked about what foreshadowing is. It's kind of a preview, clues that the author includes in the text that gives the reader an idea of what may come later. And then um, you're also going to look at pacing. So the rhythm of words, are we looking at long drawn out sentences? Are we looking at short, swift, brief words that move the text along at a, at a pretty quick pace? And so the right section here gives you a chart to provide some specific examples of each foreshadow and pacing in the story. So we've already thought about and clarified the idea of tension from yesterday's text um, and lesson. Uh, we actually have terms associated with the technique the author used now. So before we were just talking about the tension between curiosity and anxiety and how that creates suspense, but we really didn't have any literary terms or techniques that the author actually used to create that curiosity or to create that anxiety. Now we do, right? So foreshadow and pacing are two writing techniques that authors can use to create and generate that curiosity in you and to create and generate that anxiety. And so now you're going to look at examples in the text where those techniques are used. Now you know what to look for, right? So now we're really uncovering some author secrets here. That is the point of analysis of craft and structure, because once you know it and you can identify it, you can replicate it and you become an even more effective writer. So again, we've discussed tension several times. Remember, I asked you to think about how the author creates a sense of curiosity and anxiety before, right? I asked you that last week. I asked you again um, yesterday. And so now that you've been thinking through that and even annotating and generating some responses based on that, you have a really good place to start as you start thinking through those opposing uh, feelings there. So that's how the think and write sections are connected. Now you're going to move on to the closing section for today, identifying a passage from the story that you think creates the most suspense for the reader, right? That tension between curiosity and anxiety. You're going to find a passage that you think captures all of that the best. And then you're going to read it aloud to a family member, caregiver, or friend and see if he or she agrees. Not going to record it necessarily today, um, just doing a read aloud. May I encourage you that when you do this read aloud, that you do so with some drama, all right? And so if you really want to sell your point of view, if you really want to sell this passage as being the most suspenseful, then you're going to have to have that in your voice. You're going to have to create some spookiness, you know, some suspense yourself in your tone, um, in your volume of your voice. Um, it's really going to push people to your point of view. So that's a little tip for me to you on persuasion when you're reading out loud, okay? And enjoy it. Have fun with it. So again, it is your turn to read, think, talk, write today. Uh, make sure that you keep in mind the definition of foreshadowing and pacing so that you know exactly what you're looking for in the text and that you're having that conversation with a family member, friend, or caregiver about clues from a story or a movie that you've either read or viewed um, and how those, those clues that were provided for you actually created a sense of suspense. You're going to complete that foreshadow and pacing chart and then you're going to identify what you believe to be the most suspenseful part of the entire story and share it in a very dramatic fashion, fashion with your family member, caregiver, or friend. If you need any additional help, make sure that you pause this video and replay the sections as many times as you need to and that you reach out to a teacher by email for support if you get stuck. When you're done, 
Make sure that you're sharing your learning with a family member, caregiver, or friend, which you're already doing. You complete the weekly fluency activity using a page from the text. And you do an additional 20 minutes of reading from something that you choose and enjoy. And I will, again, see you back here for our wrap-up lesson. I'm looking forward to it. And we're going to close out the Telltale Heart.